Good morning, Endeavour. Welcome to Flight Day 4. Uh, good morning, Kyle.
今回スペースシャトルは SFU に SFU の下側から近づくという方法を取りスペースシャトルのロボットアームの届く範囲まで近づいたところで私がロボットアームを操縦し SFU を捕獲回収しました初めて SFU を目視によって確認できたのは約 80km 手前でしたその時 SFU は非常に明るい星のように見えました Go ahead, Guigi. Yes, Dharma, we would like to turn the power off on the O19 for TV power, if you concur. Your go. Thanks. Okay, we've got you now, and it's a great image. Okay. Deborah, you ready to talk with Tom Miller of NBC Nightside? We're ready. Tom Miller, please give Endeavor a call.
Yes. Hi, Endeavor. Tom Miller in Charlotte, North Carolina, where we just got through with a uh, tail end of a winter snowstorm. How are you? Yeah, we're great, Tom, and we're reading you loud and clear. Good. Same here. Thank you. The crew of the Space Shuttle Endeavor is nearing the halfway point of its nine-day mission in space. The six men blasted off from Cape Canaveral Thursday morning. Just yesterday, they successfully recovered a four-ton Japanese satellite, and they still have a lot to do, including releasing and retrieving a U.S. satellite and conducting two spacewalks before returning to Earth on the 20th. And we're pleased to have them with us now from aboard the Shuttle Endeavor. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Tom. Uh, Commander Duffy, uh, except for that piece of space junk you had to maneuver around the other day, how would you characterize the mission as going so far? <laughs> well, that was just a little surprise for us, but not something that's all that unusual. Uh, the mission's going great. Uh, we had a real big day yesterday, a uh, big day for, you know, for us, the crew, for NASA, and for NASA, the Japanese Space Agency, as we, uh, as we grappled their satellite. It was a great day. Yeah, it was a good day. In fact, you completed your primary mission. Uh, I think, Mr. Wokata, you're responsible for operating the robotic arm that snatched in your country's satellite. Can you describe how you felt after you completed that successfully? Yes, the, uh, the robotic arm of the space shuttle worked uh, very fine, and uh, this uh, successful retrieval of the SFU showed a very good uh, example of the uh, coordination and the international cooperation between Japan and the United States, and I'm very happy to be part of this effort. You're going to go back to your country a hero, you know. How are you going to handle the success? <laughs> well, after this mission, uh, since this mission is a very uh, uh, interesting mission for all of us, and this involves uh, retrieval of uh, satellite rendezvousing and uh, extra vehicular activity. And I learned a lot through the training and through this mission uh, to prepare for the space station assembly mission. So after this mission, I will be ready uh, to, to be trained for future uh, space station assembly missions. I want to know how you felt when you were awakened to theme music from uh, the movie Godzilla. <laughs> You don't have to answer that. <laughs> Dr. Perry, let me go to you. You're the only medical doctor on board in addition to your uh, degrees in engineering. What, what, what's your specialty on this mission, being both a medical doctor and uh, an engineer? Well, um, I'm doing a number of different things on, on this flight. Uh, tomorrow I'm excited about uh, the opportunity to go outside and uh, do a spacewalk. In addition to that, um, as you said, I'm the medical officer, although that duty has been very easy since uh, nobody's had any kind of medical problems. I also am responsible for photo TV documentation, so I'm taking uh, pictures like crazy. We're hoping to bring back some uh, absolutely spectacular views of uh, the Earth and of uh, the satellites and the VVAs. And I'm also responsible for some of the secondaries that we have on board, including uh, SSBV and some of the middecks. Great. I hope we get a chance to look at those pictures. I, I hope some of them will be shared with us in the media. Uh, Absolutely. Good. Dr. Chow, you're designated as the prime spacewalker. Uh, what does that mean? You, you walk twice, and what do you hope to accomplish out there? Oh, well, that's right. Uh, I'll be performing two of the spacewalks. Um, what it means to be the lead was that pre-flight for the previous year, I've been following all the issues and developing and uh, getting our timelines, getting all the uh, hardware developed for our spacewalks. And uh, we'll be going out tomorrow, Dan and I will, and uh, Winston and I will be going out uh, a couple days later. The uh, primary objective, or the objective of these spacewalks is for the International Space Station. We'll be um, evaluating the design concepts, the maintenance concepts, and the assembly concepts to make sure that uh, and all these data will feed directly back into the space station uh, program to make sure that we come up with a design and a method that will work. Now, have you practiced these, uh, I would imagine, quite extensively back on Earth, probably in an underwater tank or something like that? That's correct. The three of us have uh, undergone many hours of uh, training in the weightless environment training facility, which is, you know, the big swimming pool 
where we uh, get in our suits and get down there and get neutrally buoyant so we can float around in the water and simulate our tasks. I, I imagine, though, doing the real thing is quite different. Are you a little bit nervous about it uh, at all? Oh, I think you're right. It's going to be quite different, but uh, no, I think the word is excited. We're, uh, I think we're all very excited to, uh, to get outside tomorrow and, and I'll get again on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. You'd lose time up there. We lose time here on the night side, too, when you're, uh, uh, when you're up at night and sleep during the day. <laughs> uh, Commander Jett, let me ask you how uh, takeoff was on Thursday. Uh, I, think, I think you fellas took off in the coldest weather since, since Challenger and the O-ring problem. It was about 44 degrees, I understand, in Cape Canaveral. Were you, were you fellas anxious at all about that? Uh, no, Tom. Actually, we weren't. Um, we're very aware of the, the temperature limits and the procedures that NASA has um, to uh, launch the space shuttle. So we were very comfortable with the temperature. Uh, the ride itself was actually uh, pretty much what we expected. Um, it's been described to me several times, and uh, they do a pretty good job simulating it. Uh, the first two minutes uh, really reminded me of a catapult shot back in my days flying off aircraft carriers. So other, rather than a two-second cat shot, it was more like a a two-minute cat shot, and then uh, once the booster separated, it was a pretty smooth ride all the way to Miko. So it was real exciting, and um, you know we got a, a lot. Of, we saw a lot of the light coming in through our windows too. I, I heard we lit up most of the East Coast. Okay, we're on the flight deck now. Name for Brian. Catherine. Yeah, further analysis of uh, SFU thermal during different attitudes here shows us that we may not have any heater elements failed. An engineering thermal analysis of SFU shows 
that we have adequate SFU thermal margin throughout the entire OST deploy and rendezvous profile. Currently, we are working toward a deploy with a window opening per the flight plan at three days, one hour and 51 minutes. During orbit uh, 49, that deploy rev, we will have very adequate COM S-band, and we will do uh, both for uh, the release and the set burn. We'll be doing an early handover to assure that COM. Well, that's great news story. I'm glad to hear that, um, and uh, we'll certainly be ready for that. And glad to hear we'll have calm with you as well. Okay, Brian. Back with you, Tedris West, and we're on the flight deck. Okay, Story, you want me to proceed with uh, SLA disable? And uh, we'll coordinate that, sir. We'll get the lid open and get lazing. Stand by one. Okay.
Story, if you're done with the KU, we're going to do Block 3B. That'd be fine. And store the uh, ACS thing timer. About a minute and a half from now, at one hour, 29 minutes, a Delta will launch out of Florida with a Korea set. You probably will not have a chance to see it, but we didn't want to pass up the opportunity. Appreciate it, Troy. Thanks. Endeavor the Delta did launch. Thanks, Troy. I guess we're just coming by LA and Phoenix now. Copy. Never no need to reply. We're going to turn the shutter on the alpha camera.
Also, sorry for an update. Uh, it turned out we were able to see that delta, and it was a beautiful sight up uh, above the atmosphere with a long uh, plume. That is fantastic. That may be a first. It was truly something. Uh, we, at the last minute, we grabbed a camcorder, and maybe we uh, will be able to bring some of that home. Okay, we look forward to talking with you about that. This is Mission Control Houston. It's a well, it's less than that. It's always worthwhile trying, even if it seems impossible. You bet. Uh, in fact, it was a beautiful, clear night uh, across the United States. We saw Dallas and Houston, and then uh, looked up and saw this bright uh, white ball of light almost looked like the moon rising, and then it stretched out into a long line, and then uh, that line uh, faded into a deep speckled red, and then finally faded off. Thanks, Dan. At about uh, 5, 10 a.m. Central Time, as they were preparing uh, for the release of the OS flyer. Again, that uh, Delta launch, a launch of Koreasat, a Korean communication satellite. It occurred uh, from the Kennedy Space Center at 5, 10 a.m. Central Time. The crew uh, there reporting that uh, they were able to see that. Endeavor at that time was uh, approaching uh, the Gulf of Mexico on a course uh, going right across the uh, southern United States, and then uh, south across the Gulf of Mexico. And Houston, Star, are you ready for the uh, group you powered up? We sure are, Brian.